Welcome to the Crafty Stitches podcast. This is a video podcast about all of my crafting adventures. And in today's episode, we are going to talk about some socks, cozies, my embroidery project, my annual DB Socktober sock along, and there is a little surprise that I want to share. Let's get started. Good day everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Mariette, also known as Die Boerfrau, and I'm coming to you from South Africa. Today is Friday the 27th of September 2024 and this is episode 72. In the Crafty Stitches podcast I share all my craft projects with you. I like to knit, crochet and sew. Oh and I also love to bake. I haven't made a crochet item in a while and I mostly show knitting on the podcast. All the knitting projects have project pages on Ravelry if you need more information on that. Sewing projects unfortunately does not but I will link patterns if I can find them online. I also have links down in the description box of all the places where you can find me on social media and my online shop for patterns and yarn kits. If I don't show a project I just have not worked on it or not enough to actually show something so keep an eye out for it next time. Anyway let's talk about what I am wearing today. I am wearing my first Riika top that I made in Al Cotton's 4-ply. I did not meet gauge and I ended up making a blue one in a smaller size but I still wear this one a lot. I'm also wearing my cables and lace socks today. I knit these in Electric Carnations Jenny's Sock Yarn in January 2023. And this is a beautiful pattern. I really should knit it again sometime. I have a lovely cup of coffee in this very cute mug. I hope you have something to drink and maybe a project to work on and let's talk projects. I have three finished projects to share with you today. My first finished project for today is my striped long socks. Here they are, looking fabulous. Oh my goodness, I love them so much. So the idea behind these socks is to be able to wear them up with boots and to be able to wear them slouchy. I'm still trying to figure out how to keep them staying all the way up. They do stay up but comes down a little bit. I think my knitted eye cords are maybe too stretchy. Or I might not be tying them tight enough. Not entirely sure. But I am wearing them and I am figuring out how to get them to do what I want them to do. This is the eye cord. So I've started these socks on the 26th of May and finished them on September 11th. In the previous episode I was still knitting on the eye cords and now they are all done. These socks was knit on 2.25mm needles with mostly Naughty Habit Kaiso sock yarn. 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon with 366 meters on 100 grams. This is a cowgirl blues colorway and this one I dyed myself. 
So the pair used 172 grams of yarn. My second finished project for today is my water bottle cozy. This is it. Isn't that just gorgeous? This is for a pattern that I'm currently working on. It will be in three sizes to fit 500ml, 750ml and 1 litre bottles. So this one is for the 500ml bottle and it is the stocking stitch version. In the previous episode, I was here at this beautiful stitch marker by Anna Gret from Pincushion Crafts and I finished the cozy. This was also made with Naughty Habit Kaiso yarn. This was a gift for my birthday last year and it was one of the sock club boxes. I love this. I knit my Felicity sock pattern sample with this yarn. So I started this cozy on the 3rd of September. And I finished it on the 9th of September. I just couldn't put it down. It used 16 grams of yarn. Fun, quick project. And the pattern is in the works. Then, my third finished project for this episode are another pair of socks. I just finished the second sock this week and I cannot wait to share it with you. So as you may know, I host the Socktober Sock Along every year and design a pattern to go with it. I started this design at the end of June and finished the sample this week. Very excited. I have shown the foot part of the socks on the podcast and today I'm revealing what it looks like. Here they are. Oh wow, that looks amazing on camera as well. I love it. I'm so excited about these. I'm very inspired by stripes recently and I wanted something stripey, fun, and colorful. Now if you are not into colorful socks you can always use one color for all the texture stripes and I'm sure it will be gorgeous. So this pattern is called Equal Stripes Socks. The pattern is written toe up and cuff down and it will be a lot of fun to knit. I think I am definitely going to knit another pair. I think if you're not into the texture, you can also knit the sock in stocking stitch with the stripes. That can be fun. Now, I had a little bit of a dilemma <laughs> with these stripes and I wondered how on earth am I going to get the stripes to be an equal width all over the entire sock. <laughs> equal stripes. See where the name comes from. So in the pattern I included a table with the centimeter measurement and round counts. So if you're an adventurous beginner you can just measure your foot and use the centimeter measurements to help you determine which selection to knit. Or if you're an experienced sock knitter and you know you knit 60 round for your foot length. This is including the gusset increases for toe up or gusset decreases for cuff down. 
then you just go to the 60 rounds on the table and then you'll be able to see how many of the texture rounds you should knit and how many of them will repeat for your foot length so that you get equal stripes from your cuff to your toe. I am really very proud of this one. I included my jogless garter stripe in the round method where you are able to line these garter stripes just slightly so that they are a little more in line here on the beginning of round side. Here you can see what that looks like. I always like to see the beginning of round side of socks, but no one actually shows that. <laughs> so I make a point in showing that so that you can see what it will look like when you knit it yourself. I'm super excited for the sock along. I will talk a little bit more about it later on in the episode. I used a few different yarns for this one. Let's see. Naughty Habit Kaiso was these ones. This one was part of a sock set and this was the mini with it. This was a mini from a different sock set. And this pink is a 100 gram hank that I bought on its own. This was a yellow mini that I bought from Piana Yarns. This mini I dyed myself and lastly this one is a full hank from Open Sky Yarns. I think it was called Green Machine that I got as a gift and I misplaced the yarn label. <laughs> so yes, I put all of these colors together for this sock and I love it so much. I used seven colors in total for my sample. I knitted on 2.25 millimeter needles and the sample was knit toe up, but the pattern will also be available cuff down. All right, let me put this one down and let's talk about my current work in progress projects. Today I have three projects to show you. One is a new knitting project, my embroidery project and a woodworking project. <laughs> let's start with the knitting project. As I said earlier on, I am so inspired by stripes and I could not resist this one. I had some Moya double knit 100% cotton in my stash and I wanted to make a ranunculus or some top for myself with it for spring. So I got it out and when I had the yarn in my hands, <laughs> I was so inspired basically spoke to me so I could not let this idea go and decided to cast this on and see how it works out so I'm using these two colors this is bubblegum and this is rose quartz right here is the project I just cannot tell you how much I love this project. <laughs> this project 
feels as if it is flowing out of my head, over my needles, into what it was always meant to be. It just happened. <laughs> I started the fronts first and joined them together. Then I picked up stitches at the shoulder and knit the back piece, increased a bit on both of them here and then joined it together to knit in the round. I also decreased a little bit just after the bust and then increased a little bit for a line shaping towards the hem. I joined in the round and I decided to knit the neckline and armhole ribbings to make sure that it fits as I want it to fit before I continue so that I could rip back if necessary and I have to say I am pleasantly surprised at how it came together after those were finished. I absolutely love this project. I made the straps nice and wide and I love the look of that and these stripes are just so fun. I made 10 round stripes I knit two gauge swatches before I started, one with 4.5 millimeter needles and the gauge was very open so I dropped down to 3.75 millimeter needles and that gave me a beautiful fabric that I just love. I knit the ribbings on 3.25 millimeter needles and I cannot wait to get to wear this one. I think it's going to be one of those items that I wear at least twice a week. That is all the knitting projects let's talk about my embroidery project so this is my duvet cover well it is a tablecloth but it will become my duvet cover um, made of linen to be embroidered with cotton thread by me. So in the beginning of the month, I decided to see if I can get a whole block embroidered in a month. That would have been from the last episode in August to the 20th of September when I was supposed to film this podcast and today I know the answer to that. <laughs> I was a no. I did not embroider the whole block in the past month. So this project will be part of the podcast for a while. It's going to take some time but I'm in no particular rush to finish it. I it will get done when it is done. So this is what I have done. Maybe a quarter? I'm not sure. I am using DMC 6 strand embroidery thread in three colors the green is 988 the maroon is 777 and the burnt orange coppery color is 900 i will continue working on this in the coming months okay now 
for the woodworking project. I was talking to my husband about the storing of my sock blockers and my sock ruler. These are all from Little Yarn Croft. And I had the idea to hang them up. Ooh. So we looked into that and he said that it might not be wise to hang these medium sized ones up in this opening. As there is not a significant amount of wood here to provide strength and it might break in the future by hanging it up that way and the second thing is the sock ruler does not have a hole in it so I have these little wooden blocks in the house I saw them at a friend's house and she got me two of them. They are used to keep your phone upright or on its side, however you like. And I asked my husband, what about this idea to store the sock blockers and then they'll be on the shelf? Well, he liked that idea. And immediately made a drawing and we looked through the wood that we have here and decided on a piece of teak and i will be honest i only stood around being moral support and someone to chat to while the item was made i did read the measurements from the drawing for him to cut the item out and he finished it with some wood varnish for me let me just I am so happy with this little wooden stand. It looks super cute and I know it was made for me with love. So this is what it looks like with the sock blockers and my sock ruler in it. Isn't that just the cutest? Gosh, I love it so much. <laughs> I'm so happy with this project, even if I did not make it myself. I love it. Now, that actually should have been in the finished project section but it's here now so let's move over to find out what's been happening it has been a very busy three weeks since the previous podcast episode i had to delay <laughs> This episode with one week I could I just could not fit everything into my schedule I had to bake 50 packets of sourdough salt crackers last week for an order and they get rolled out by hand and cut out with a shaped cookie cutter so that takes a bit of time and elbow grease Luckily, I love what I do, so it was a lot of fun, but that was a lot of crackers. <laughs> we also love the sourdough crackers. It is a really delicious and healthy, salty snack. And of course, on top of that is still all the other baking that needs to get done. I currently have a double batch of breads that need to go into the oven in a bit. And I am busy with a batch of sourdough croissants for the weekend that gets laminated with butter. So you get those beautiful layers that you expect from a croissant. But back to the knitting. The equal stripes sock pattern for the Socktober sock along will definitely be available on the 1st of October. 
If it is ready sooner, I will keep you posted on social media. The pattern is written toe up and cuff down and will be available in my online shop, my Etsy shop and my Ravelry store. This is a really fun pattern to knit and I'm sure you will love it as much as I did designing them. It was inspired by stripes and fun colors just to have fun with. As I mentioned, I think it will also be beautiful if all the texture stripes is knit in one color. I think it will look stunning. The Socktober Sock Along is a fun sock along where we just make socks for a whole month and have fun. It is free. I will be hosting an Instagram group for it. If you want to join us there, just send me your Instagram handle and I will add you to the group when I create it. I'm looking forward to that. There will be meetups and it's going to be a lot of fun. If you are a returning viewer of the podcast, you will know that I have designed my first ever sweater called the Fairy Lily Sweater. The Fairy Lily Sweater is available as a yarn kit on my website. It is made with Yana Yarns Sock Yarn and 4.5mm needles, which creates a beautiful drapey fabric. It is knit from the top down with a round yoke and then have a little bit of raglan increases. There is a little lace section just before the bottom ribbing. There are two sleeve options in the pattern, a three-quarter sleeve and a long sleeve. And as you'll be able to see in the pictures, the long sleeve option also has some lace before the ribbing where the three-quarter sleeve length does not. The yarn kit is available in 14 different colors and I will add a picture here so that you can see that. The kits are dyed to order so it will not immediately ship but it will take about two to three weeks to reach you. I will leave a link in the description box below so that you can read all about that on my website. I think that is everything that I had to share with you today. Please let me know in the comments down below what projects you are working on. I love hearing about new patterns to me and I love if you share your projects with me just as I have shared mine with you. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back and spending some time with me. And if you are new here, I hope you enjoyed this episode and that you will consider sticking around. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more of my content. And I will see you in the next video. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.